all this is dr mobeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more show um, so we have a couple of more days today and tomorrow left for the new year so happy new year as well i hope that 2020 is much much better than this i hope that in 2020 we have reached a point where the pandemic has really become slowed down and the businesses can pick back up and you can start traveling again and meeting again i think once that happens the the economic boom will be tremendous because of the escape effect that we would have that we would go back and work even more rigorously so with this so these are wishes i i wish that i pray that so hopefully you all would enjoy it so the discussion i wanted to do today is about the data from uk about the uh, b117 variant Unfortunately, I still have to call it UK variant because it is becoming popular that way. I would not like to call it UK variant. It is B117, and that is the right way to say it. Um, so let's look at the data. I'll spill the beans up front. The data shows, and I will show you how the data analysis is done, but the data is preliminary data. It is a small sample. Preliminary data shows that the variant is more transmissible, so it transmits more, but it is not more lethal, and that is the most important thing to notice. So I think you would enjoy these numbers. So here is my illustration of the new type. The new type is running on these skates because it can, it can bind faster and it can spread faster. And here is the source of the data. This is the article or a, or a study, Public Health England Investigation of Novel SARS-CoV-2 Variant, Variant variant of Concern, so VOC 2020-1201. And this is the technical briefing. There is a more detailed data processing here. This is quite involved. So I did not dare to present that here because of the length of this uh, topic. So I wanted to first bring in the, uh, the summary of the data first. And so let's start. Hopefully everyone is doing good. So here is the illustrations for this. <clears throat> we have preliminary data that shows that the the virus is not, the new variant is not more lethal. It is more transmissible. And let's see what kind of data do they have and how did they collect that? So this is a very smart thing that they did. There is a there is an RT-PCR like test called, it's a TACMAN test, but anyways, imagine that there is a test for SARS-CoV-2. That test is thermopath TAC path assay by Lighthouse. So there is a specific test and that test was identifying a part of the spike protein where the virus got the mutation. Remember, there are three mutations that of concern in the spike protein. Because of that, one part of this test fails. So as soon as one signal fails, you can then say that you can use this test to find the new variants. Isn't that smart? That Let's say I have one test that does not fail because it is not connecting to the variant part or the mutated part of the spike protein. So it just says, yeah, we have SARS-CoV-2. Another test detects the SARS-CoV-2, two signals or two areas it identifies them. And the third area, it fails on them. And so all of a sudden, that test actually becomes valuable because it is identifying the SARS-CoV-2, but identifying the new variant. So uh, this new, this test, it's not a new test. This test is failing when trying to identify the area where 6970 deletion is. And we've been talking about the deletions and mutations a lot. So these are the videos that we have done before. I'm not going into that detail again. And what they say is in that technical brief that I just showed you, they say that ideally within two weeks, they actually look at every person's samples, whoever they have collected the sample from, they look at the whole genome. 
So within two weeks, they can actually identify with 100% accuracy that is it the new variant or the older wild type. But for a rapid uh, knowledge, they are using the failure of, a th of this test. Remember, it's not a complete failure. It is partial failure of this test as an identifying test for the new variant. Beautiful way of doing it. So, so let's say this is the spike protein. And this spike protein has few mutations on it. For example, 501Y and Y. And here is the test. And the test is not able to work here. And it is failing. So then wherever it is failing, we can use that to say, OK, this person has a new, uh, new pathogen. One interesting thing that they noted, and I'll go over the article in a second. One interesting thing that they noted was that it was more prevalent. The new variant is more prevalent in 25 to 49. And maybe that was the reason that some of the folks were asking me these questions that this apparently this virus actually uh, affects the youngers more. If you would look at the charts, you would see that even the wild type, that means the other variants, the original types, even they affect this population more as well in general in case of number of cases. And I think that is because the folks in this group are probably a little less careful. They think that we would not get severely impacted. And so they go about doing their function, and they're meeting each other, and they are kind of spreading the virus. And so they have a higher incidence of the cases for the wild type or the previous ones and for the new type as well. So this is sort of a incorrect assumption to make to say that, hey, it is more common in this age group. So somehow the variant has a tendency to infect the youngers. It is it doesn't have the tendency. It's just that this group has more um, more cases in general. And now how did they do the study? The study is very interesting. So if you look here, let's say this is the wild type virus. That means the virus before this variant, the one that was going around. And that, that virus, the wild type, had many variants in it as well. But the number of mutations were less. We were less concerned. We were less horrified and all that. And then here is the new one, B117, which is a little more which has a lot more uh, mutations, so made people more concerned and nervous and all that. So what they did was they took two groups of people. So this is called a matched cohort study, where what they do is they take samples from two slices of the population, one with the wild type infections and one with the new type infections, and they match them by age, by sex, by gender, by their living place, and so on. So because of this, this is called a matched cohort study. And what did they match on? How did they do one-to-one -one matching? So for example, if they would pick on the wild type, if they would pick a person who is 54 years old and who is a male and who may have, let's say, diabetes, then on the variant type, they would also find a person who is infected with the variant and is 54 years old and his, has diabetes and so on, and is male. So what did they do? They compared them or matched them on age, sex, their residence, area of residence, and then the, the specimen date. So it's not that they took specimen, let's say, from January, and then they took specimens from October. So the, the specimen dates were matched as well. So infection dates were kind of matched too. So this is how they matched two separate groups. And then they studied the infections in them, the severity of infection in them, the hospitalization, and so on. And they saw what is really the difference. So let's look at that difference. So here is a, a table that I put together for these two types. So here, the wild type is the one. These are all those variants that were already present, not the new variants. These were Wuhan virus or the original virus and its changes and whatever changes were there, which were going around in the society at that time. And then this one is the new one, B117. So first of all, the infected folks in both groups Median age was 35 years. 
median age here 36 years. So very close. So they are comparable groups. Sex, 51.4% females in the wild type and 51.4% females on the variant type. So again, from a gender point of view as well, they matched. So when we used to uh, learn to take history when we were becoming doctors, so we used to have a uh, joke that uh, a young doctor like us at that time uh, was learning to take history. So he was sitting with his patient and he said, um, your name and the patient gave the name and he said age and he got the age. And then he said sex and patient said no. <laughs> so we used to say that maybe he was married. So sex, 51.4% females and 51.4% females here as well. Ethnicity. Uh, the percentage of infections were almost similar in both ethnicities. The Asians, the wild type, the, the other variants, Asian, it was infected, it was infecting Asians with 13.5% rate, while the new type was infecting Asians by 10.1. In both cases, the higher prevalence was in the whites. And I think that the reason for that may have simply been the majority of the population may be whites. Check this out. This is important. Hospitalization. 26 in the wild type. Again, wild type, the, the ones which is not the new variant, the other ones, existing ones. 1.5% 1 people got hospitalized. And then in the new variant, 16 people or 0.9% got hospitalized. However, we cannot look at this data to say, well, almost uh, two third or one third reduction in hospitalization because the p-value was not significant. So we cannot compare them to say this is a significant difference. So the result is actually simply that there was no difference in hospitalization. Both groups have similar hospitalization percentages which is very interesting because if the hospitalizations are not increased, then that would mean death rates are not increased either. And so they both have not much difference. Then check this out, deaths. This is what I was trying to get the data from and I'll, I'll go over the data in a second. So in the wild type or previous ones, 10 deaths out of 1360 people. So you might say that, well, they were looking at total of 1,769 people in both groups. Why are they only comparing 1,360 people and 1,340 people for death? That is because they were measuring or they're counting deaths for 28 days period. So within that time, out of 1,360 patients that they had seen, 10 died. And that was 0.73% rate. On the other hand, in the new variant, the B117, 12 out of 1,314, 40, so 0.89%. So again, mildly higher, but if you look at the p-value, that is again not significant. So this, this could have been this way. This 0.89 may have been here, and this 0.73 may have been here. So the data is not significant. That means no difference. So this is an important part that the new variant, at least from this preliminary data of about 3,400 people, does not show any increased lethality. Hospitalization is the same, and the lethal outcomes or deaths are the same. So this, this actually answered a big question for me, because that is what I, I continue to try to find. Reinfections. So reinfection is also important that, is it going to cause reinfection in the people who had already become infected? So they saw that reinfection again in both cases, both groups, one group had the new variant and the other group had the previous ones. Three people got reinfected or the re reinfection rate was 1.70 per thousand, almost two per thousand. And in the new one, two people got infected, so 1.13 per thousand, almost one per thousand. So it actually does not have a, again, P is not significant. P is exactly one. So it's not significant. 
So we can't say that, hey, this actually causes less re reinfection. Yes, in this sample, it showed less reinfection, but this is a random chance that it showed it this way compared to the wild type. It could have, these numbers could have been reversed as well. The important thing, the important takeaway is there is no significant in, increase in number of reinfections. So this question that will it cause reinfections, that is answered at least prelimin preliminarily that it does not cause more reinfections. If it does not cause more re reinfections, that means that the previously infected people are able to defend against it. That means the vaccines will work as well. That is what I had been saying all along. So good that some initial data, small sample size shows that. And then secondary attack rate. Secondary attack rate is <clears throat> attack rate is the spread of the virus, right? So if I am infected and then from me, how many people are getting infected? What is the rate of that? That is attack rate or out of 100 people, how many people get infected in some given time? Secondary attack rate is people who are in close contact to those who are sick with this virus. How many of them are getting sick? So that is transmissibility, correct? So if I am sick and my family members are near me, what will happen to them? How fast will they become sick? If the virus is more transmissible, then they would become sick faster. So check this out. Secondary attack rate, 9.8% in case, I think I got this number. Let me just very quickly confirm it. Secondary attack rate. Yeah, so correct. 9.8% of the people close contacts with the wild type got infected. On this side, 15.1%. So almost one third more. So that is the, so we can say that transmissibility is slightly more, but lethality is not more, hospitalization is not more. And that is what is important. So I thought this was very, very interesting. Let's just look at some of the, the charts here as well, just to go over this data. So what they have done is they've said that, hey, we have gotten this, this virus, the new variant was called virus under investigation. So the investigations have completed, and now they're calling virus of uh, uh, re redesignated the name to VOC, virus of concern. The remaining name is the same. Then they say that we use this S gene. S gene is spike gene. The test's failure on spike gene is being used to identify the new one. So they talk about that over here. Then if we continue on, they are showing how the the prevalence of the new variant increased. So if you see here on 10, 12, the number of people ill with the new variant was 116 or 3%. And then December 7, 98% in, in a specific locality. Similarly, they are showing here the percentage of the cases ill with this virus in various parts of uh, UK. Then here, what they're talking about is age groups. And this is what I want us to look at. So look here, the light purple are the number of infections caused by previous variants. And the dark pur purple are the number of infections caused by the new variant. So you can actually see that it is spreading and more and more cases are of the new variant. That doesn't mean that it is causing more deaths. That doesn't mean it is um, reinfecting older uh, the folks who had already become infected. It's just that new variant, new infections are mostly of this variant. This is important graph to see. Here, what they're showing is, look at the age groups, lesser than 25. And once again, look at the light chart here, light bars and the dark bars. The number of cases don't seem to have gone up. They're almost kind of steady. Same is the case here as well, 25 to 59. Similar numbers. Again, the new variant is more in them. But if you look at the peaks, they are kind of on the same thing. Why are we getting one more peak? That may be that people met before Christmas or during Christmas and so on. But this does not look like the new variant somehow is causing more and more infections. Otherwise, you would see a big peak over here, something like something like this, 
that you would see, let's say the previous original virus variants were causing something like this. And now you would see the new one to be going up like this. And that would say, OK, this is actually spreading very fast and causing too many infections. Maybe it would have done it if the lockdowns were not there. But anyways, I don't see yet that the new variant is somehow causing a higher spread. And then look at the uh, 60 plus. And once again, the number of cases are less because maybe that population is small as well. And the new variant is sim <laughs> sorry, similarly taking over. So now when somebody says that youngsters are youngsters are infected more, that is just because they were already getting infected more. It's not that the new variant came and did something to the youngsters. This is by age. Uh, and I think this is age and sex pyramid. So once again, this side of the chart is for the other variants. And this side is the new variants. And if, if you see not much difference, the gender infectivity is the same as well. And then you go here. And here, the gray areas are, uh, I believe, are the <coughs> wild type. And the purple areas are the new type. And then they have these findings, which I have presented to you. And then they have a summary here. In summary, what they're saying is preliminary results from the cohort study found no statistically significant differences in hospitalization and 28-day case fatality between cases with the variant and wild-type comparator cases. So there we have it. Again, it is preliminary. But keep in mind that we have been looking at studies as small as 60 people and 90 people and 150 people to kind of understand the data and direction of something. Here, this is actually a larger study, 1,730 something uh, patients on both sides. <clears throat> and finally, I also wanted to share this with you. I know that tomorrow is uh, 31st, and then we have New Year. So Happy New Year. Hopefully, we'll see each other tomorrow as well. Maybe I'll take an off on 1st January, and um, we'll go from there. So Happy New Year. Now, um, let's look at some uh, comments, and then we'll go from there. And by the way, if you like the work, if you like this, please like, subscribe, and share. In the description, there is a link that you can buy me coffees. And if you wanted to support the channel, there is a link as well to do that. So thank you very much for it. Cool. So uh, how is everything? What do you think about this data? So Sanjay says uh, that the data is for up to 12th December. There is a huge spike in infection in the UK now. So that, that may be that there is more transmissibility, Sanjay. So Christmas uh, came in as well. People, I, I think, met as well. The virus does spread faster. But at least from this data that we are seeing, it is not more lethal. So it's not that if the other virus, the wild types, were killing 1% out of 100, and this one is killing 5 or 10 out of 100. Same is the case for hospitalizations as well. So at least those people who are infected by this, they are not going to hospitals more. Yes, the problem is this. As it is spreading faster, that means it's going to, if we, we are not careful, it is going to overwhelm our hospital systems, our support systems. And the infection and the death rates Infection, not infection rate, the death rates are, da, are whatever they are, let's say 0.5%, are that way because of the support. So if the hospitals get overwhelmed, then people will not get enough support and the death rate would go up. That will not be that the virus is more lethal, but that would be because it is spreading faster and hospitals cannot support new uh, cases. What is not proven yet, which I think will be proven at some point, 
that this virus would cause less um, severe infections. In this data, it shows to be equally severe, but not more. So Sanjay, your, your point is correct that it is spreading fast. And that would mean more people are going to go to hospitals. And that is where the problem is going to occur. Uh, Sanjay, thank you very much. <clears throat> John Snyder, yes, you're correct. It just infects more people. And correct, that can result in an outcome, bad outcome, and that is that hospitals can, cannot support them. But generally, if I get this virus and somebody else get the wild type, the chances of severity and hospitalization and death are the same. That is important. Barbara said that would be wonderful, and Luffy agrees. Less lethal would be great. Yes, less lethal would be great. I hope we get that data soon as well. Uh, Zelina says ivermectin should work in new variant, but I'm not a doctor. Ivermectin, I have discussed it many, many times that ivermectin is not an antiviral. That means against SARS CoV 2. That means it would work on whatever variant there is because. It disrupts the viral cargo going to the nucleus. Virus is cargo going to nucleus. So as long as it is a coronavirus, which is trying to send its, its cargo in the nucleus, new variant or the old variant, that is going to be blocked by ivermectin. So you are correct. Definitely. Uh, Abdul Basit, I was trying to find this as well. Yeah, absolutely, I'm Gregory. Luffy has spoken, so now this is the this is the thing. Jason says positive <laughs> positivity. Why is this so ignored? I think because it doesn't sell. Uh, whose quote is that? That while uh, while the truth is wearing shoes, the lies spread in half the world. So lies or or sens sensationalization actually is more attractive compared to tr truth. <laughs> Michael says, don't touch your eyes. OK, um, sorry, not Michael, Michelle. Um, so John Snyder, this is not yet known that are there longer period or shorter. So ideally, if it is more transmissible and if it is connecting faster and better with the ACE2, that means the symptoms should appear faster. So that mean window of 5.1 days for symptoms to appear should reduce, should reduce if that is the behavior, if we take that on a technical basis. So I, I didn't see that data yet. So two UK hospital trusts declared critical this afternoon. Uh, and Globe, is that because of the overwhelmed resources or something else? LA, one of the hospitals in LA, and many of the hospitals actually in LA, are Los Angeles, are overwhelmed as well. And they are declaring internal uh, disaster situations. And they are, uh, I was reading that they are treating people in their uh, gift shops and in their kitchens or su other such places. Nabu says, question, a nurse got infected after more than a week after first dose of vaccination. What are the pro probabilities? So that is correct. Uh, both companies, Pfizer and Moderna, had said that the vaccine will only become effective after the 14 or 7 days of the second dose. And it is actually understandable that after the first dose, B cells would start, the whole adaptive arm will become activated anywhere from seven days to 14 days or more. So imagine if I get the vaccine today, my immune system will get ready with that vaccine to start trying to defend in 10, 14, 15, 20 days. And the first dose is not sufficiently high in quantity to cause the immune system to be fully prepared. So it is. Number one, it is not prepared at seventh day, uh, nor it is prepared with the correct intensity. So infection would occur. Ambal, you're correct. So you're tired of the doctors not doing their job. I'm sick of that. Too much 
news of vaccine, no news on keeping healthy. Absolutely. And I think uh, for me, it is important to talk about vaccine nowadays. We have spent the whole, almost whole year talking about what other things can be done. I'm talking about vaccines just so that there are once again lots of myths and rumors, and I wanted us to stay, um, uh, you know, informed. So Phil Lee says lethality is the same as an uh, infection fatality rate, but if more people get infected, it will be higher at the population fatality rate. You're correct. So uh, Mikkel, I just responded to that, that yes, the ivermectin will work regardless of the variant for corona because it doesn't care what is the shape of coronavirus. What it does is it prevents coronavirus from stopping our cells to release interferon alphas. So in the presence of ivermectin, interferons would continue to be uh, released from cells. The, the cells that are on the side will continue to shore up their defenses. This cell, which is infected, would also keep its defenses going. So the, the defense against the virus is better. So that would continue to happen. This variant doesn't do anything like doesn't stop that. Yeah, they are being overrun. So at this time, I think more important, important to do is Sanjay that people just take care. The less gatherings, maybe mass, social distancing, and so on. <clears throat> I would have wished vitamin D and ivermectin. I know that uh, UK is giving vitamin D. Ivermectin with that would have been great as well. And that should have helped. Uh, Anthony, I'm so sorry I haven't responded to you on Twitter yet. I will. Um, I got some today. I want to ensure I do the right duration dose. Um, I think it would be a good thing. So Zelina says that I thought greater transmissibility would lead to increased viral load in person. Is this, this not the case? It is the case. Greater transmissibility means more entry into the cell, more replica uh, normal replication. But then when those replicated viruses or divided or increase in number of viruses would come out, they would go to more cells fast as well. So that would increase the speed of infection. But and that would mean increased load as well. But again, fortunately, at least in this data, not incre increase uh, death rate. <clears throat> Phil Lee says that a UK vitamin D dose be distributed only enough to prevent rickets. When will they learn? How much are they doing? Is that the daily recommended RDA? That would not do anything if somebody is just like I was down and I had to take 10,000 international units or 20,000 international units for a few days to get myself to 40 nanogram per milliliter. <laughs> Nina says so patient. Yes, thank you, Nina. Uh, Nabu says, what's the difference between efficacy and effectiveness? Efficacy, um, so I think this would become a longer discussion because then we'll talk about the vaccine's efficacy versus the drug's efficacy. How about we talk about it at a different time? <clears throat> Uh, so, Anthony, I think the dose is the same, but the um, frequency of administration will be different. Uh, Nancy, if they're using Math Plus protocol, that means they at least believe in what Dr. Marek's work is. So show them the iMask Plus protocol as well and say that this is from Dr. Marek as well. I think that should help. Uh, Wayne says, Dr. Bean is more cool. He never gets tired of answering the same question, no matter how many times it's asked. The, uh, Wayne, the reason for that is that when I started it, I believe that we need to share knowledge together to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and then humanity, hopefully. And so if I shy away from answering questions, um, then that defeats that purpose. So I would continue to do that. Although there is a downside, and the downside is that the videos become long, and so people are scared of watching them. 
But still, I think it is important that whoever is here, if they can get their answers, if I can present them, it's not necessary that I know all the answers. But whatever I know, I try to present them. Sometimes I'm wrong as well. Barbara says, thank you for your work in explaining the mechanism of action of the vaccines and dispelling the myths. You are very welcome. <laughs> Although it is, it is actually funny to read comments under the vaccines. There are, there are wild comments there. Um, Jason says that how hard is it to have global RT-PCR data values available as global metadata? I think, Jason, that is a great idea. The problem is privacy and different uh, rules and regulations in various countries. But it would actually be great. Maybe something like WHO should say that, hey, we will collect data in our databases and not have something like Sergi, Sergi, was it Sergi Sphere? Have a legit company and collect the data with WHO and then process it over there. That should be doable. Cool. So Joe says that, what are your thoughts about ivermectin as a prophylactic treatment? All of my family members and my patients and my friends who I can influence, they are all taking prophylactic ivermectin. <laughs> Simple Garden says, long videos are the norm here, yes. Nina, thank you very much. I got a friend nurse in nursing home, whole team watching your videos now. Thank you very much. Barbara, thank you very much. Cool. So uh, Mary says that are more hospitals using Math Plus protocol? Um, this is a good question. Uh, I would ask Dr. Paul Marek. I had reached out to him last week to say if he can join us this week. And he said he was out of town. So when he comes back, he said, I'll join us. Uh, join us. So maybe next week he'll join us. And we would ask him this, these questions. Mr. J says, immunity after infection versus immu vaccine immunity. So they should be equal. But I was reading an article today, so I prepare for the, these discussions. And in that article, they were saying that it is observed that in some cases, when natural infection was not able to produce immunity, for whatever reason, uh, the vaccine was able to. So I still have to see the mechanism for that, because it should not happen that way. But maybe somebody is immunocompromised, or and then the vaccine is kind of boosting it. I do not know. I'm, I'm speculating. Ideally, they should both be the same. It is correct that wild type of the whole virus uh, immunity would cause antibodies against a bunch of sites on the virus. But uh, the vaccine would only produce immunity against a spike protein because it can only produce spike protein. That is correct. And, and just for a good news, the RT-PCR cycle that they used for these testing was uh, 31. Sanjay, I have not. Can you share that link? That is That sounds very interesting. <laughs> Charles has a question. Why is the needle for COVID vaccine so big, so large? Uh, Charles, you got scared. <laughs> I didn't think that it was very large. So Maurice says that, do you think that the worldwide response to SARS-CoV-2 will carry over to other global events as in climate and pollution of our environment? I think it is the how close the danger is. So if the danger from any other event is similar to this level, this kind of stopped the whole whole world in its tracks. So if the danger is that way, then maybe. Otherwise, I don't see this level of coming together and reacting. <clears throat> Jason, your idea is great. 
there should be i think the who should be influenced to do this cool so uh, thank you very much once again please like subscribe and share uh, if you wanted to buy me a coffee there is a link for buying me a coffee i uploaded some new merchandise as well on youtube and teespring with the dr bean logo on the on the cups and the teas and and hoodies so if you like you can check that out as well if you wanted to support there's a link in the description for that too so thank you very much and i would see you tomorrow bye bye